work. All right. The Wall Street Journal reports today that an overhaul of the corporate tax code may be part of the ongoing fiscal cliff talks between President Obama and House Speaker John Boehner. Is the White House finally getting a growth policy? Wow. Here now to tell us is Dan Mitchell, senior fellow at the Cato Institute. Welcome back, Dan. Dan, let me just ask you something. Google stashed $10 billion away in Bermuda. HP has almost all of its cash offshore. And Apple has said to shareholders two-thirds of its $121 billion of cash is held outside the United States. Now, why is that? Is it just because they hate America? Why is all this money outside the U.S.? Two simple things to understand. Number one, everything they're doing is completely legal. This is foreign source income that is being taxed in the countries where it's being earned. But number two, the U.S. has the highest corporate tax rate in the developed world. And these companies, if they bring that money back to the United States, will be double taxed with a 35% corporate tax rate on top of what they paid overseas. Yes, with some credit, so maybe it doesn't get too much above 35%. But we are shooting ourselves in the foot with very bad corporate tax policy. Will President Obama change that with this talk of corporate tax reform? Larry, I don't want to burst your bubble, but I'm not holding my breath that the administration is serious about this. We've seen their idea of corporate tax reform in some of the president's budgets, and it actually is worse. It makes our worldwide tax system more expansive, so companies don't even have this ability to delay the second layer of tax. I, I think this is just a little bit of a, of a bait being dangled in front of the Republicans to try to seduce them into a, what's going to be a very bad budget deal. All right, so let's go and look at this bait and switch. Now, as I understand, and I've heard this before, and I've interviewed Secretary Geithner and so forth, the Obama plan for companies here in the USA would take the corporate tax rate from 35% to 28%. Is that in this bill? Is, what's wrong with that? Well, first of all, we don't have an actual proposal from the Obama administration. Again, I think this is just a, a little distraction, a bauble that they're dangling in front of the Republicans. But if we got the rate down to 28%, it depends on how they're, quote, paying for it, unquote. And if they make our worldwide tax system worse, if they force companies to declare investment expenses as taxable income, that's going to bias the system against a new capital uh, so, so there's all sorts of bad ways you could finance it. Now, on the other hand, if they're getting rid of the ethanol loophole and things like that, it could be good news. I just don't trust the White House because their track record on these issues is so far to the left. All right, so you're, you're, not, you're not trusting them. Okay, I get that. What about this uh, sort of conundrum? Suppose they did drop the corporate tax rate from 35 to 28. Let, let's assume somehow they pay for it with loophole closures. Put that aside. 35 to 28. Now, if you're a small business, you might still be sitting, in fact, with a higher tax rate because we know that the upper end tax rates are going up. A small business subchapter S may be at 40 percent or 44 percent, Dan, with Obamacare, while the corporate rate, the big rate, the C corp rate, goes down to 28 percent. Now, there's something wrong with that picture. There's definitely something wrong with that picture. Now, of course, we have to keep in mind that the C corps, when they pay out dividends, the dividends are then subject to double taxation, which wants to push to over 40 percent. But Here's what's really ironic about what's happening in Washington. The president just bought the big crony capitalists from the business roundtable and to meet with him, and they all responded appropriately by saying, yes, we should raise tax rates. They're talking about raising tax rates on their small business competitors. Mm -hmm. I think that's outrageous to have these cronyists sitting there figuring out ways to hurt the small and upcoming businesses, the ones that actually create the net new jobs in the economy. I think if Republicans had any brains, they would say, okay, let's slap a 20% excise tax on the salaries of CEOs that endorse higher taxes. Then we'll see what these guys All right, say. So you're saying, let me get this right, interesting point of view. You're saying these big boys, the big boys, the C-Corps, they're happy to see the smaller businesses go up to 40 or 45 percent. So they'll go down to 28 percent because that will put the smaller business competitors, the future big businesses, out of business. Is that what you're saying? This is well, a deliberate, the business roundtable is guilty of this, and they're in cahoots with President Obama. No, I don't think they're doing it deliberately to sabotage small businesses. I think this is a case of taxpayers are in a lifeboat together. They know the sharks circling the lifeboat are going to eat somebody, and so the big businesses would rather curry favor with the White House by tossing the small businesses into the ocean to get eaten. Why don't we just I have a 20% flat tax rate? Why don't we just have one single flat tax rate? Make it real simple. 
Larry, you and I have been talking about that for decades. Not that we're old enough, of course, to have been talking for decades. <laughs> if we were like Hong Kong or Singapore, we would have that 5 to 6 percent growth. We'd have a lot more prosperity. Unfortunately, Washington is dominated by this fixed pie class warfare you'd mentality. You'd get rid of the corruption. You'd get rid of the cronyism. You're exactly right. You'd get rid of the lousy, the lousy growth rate. Man, give me a flat tax rate. We can figure it out. Dan Mitchell, Cato, thank you very much. We appreciate it. All right, folks.